The idea of the dark web tends to bring to mind images of hoodie clad hackers in dark basements, like some kind of parallel economy or the Illuminati of the internet. Let me try to disabuse you of some of those notions. The reality is a little more mundane. To access the dark web, you need something like Tor, which is a piece of anonymity software that was actually developed by the US government initially to protect military communications. Once you're on the dark web, you're essentially gonna find four different things. The first is drug markets. The dark web first broke into the popular consciousness with the narcotics market, the Silk Road, and there are now countless imitators. Law enforcement, though, is shutting them down faster and with greater regularity. There's also hacking tools. This is self-explanatory, but it's not like Amazon or eBay. You don't know exactly what you're downloading usually when you buy malware or different phishing tools. There's also personal data leaked from hacks. People sell lists of email addresses, social security numbers, passwords, usernames, you name it. If you ever get spam or phishing emails, there's a good chance that sender got your details from the dark web. There's also child sex abuse material. That's easily the most sickening part of all of this and perhaps the largest part of this economy. To get any of this stuff, there's a good chance people have to hand over at least some personal data. These days, law enforcement has access to a lot of that. Cops from around the world have shut down three major markets over the past year and arrested hundreds of people based on evidence that they left online. So while the dark web might seem like an invisible, anonymous place, the truth is a lot more complicated. Someone shares their email address, their postal information to send drugs, or details of a cryptocurrency wallet, there's a good chance that's going to pretty quickly wind up on a law enforcement server at FBI headquarters.